The floral note of Immortel hits again. Yes. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite floral notes because, hey, that note is highly gourmandish. And you're going to see what I'm talking about if you stay tuned into this fragrance review. Let's get into it. <clears throat> What's going on YouTube fragrance family? Welcome to another Robes Await fragrance review. Today I'm going to put my nose on the house of Uncle Serge, Serge Lutin, and their bakery gourmand called Jeu de Peau. Let's go. Jeu de Peau hit the shelves in 2011. Bottle sizes is what you see here is what you're going to get. Uh, you can also get a bell jar of course of this stuff, but uh, it is a 1.7 ounce bottle. Concentrations ou de parfum. And pricing online, give or take, is $120 US for this fragrance. And as usual, discounters have these uh, 50 mil old school Serge Luton fragrances bottles. So uh, definitely take a look around and most of them are under hundred bucks. So uh, definitely take a look around before purchasing it for full retail price. Before I give you the goodies, we gotta talk about my partner, FragranceX.com. Thank you for this. Fragrance, you can get Jeu de Peau and a whole bunch of Serge Luton fragrances on FragranceX.com. Utilize my code ROBES08. Get a sweet discount, 15% off. Let's get into the review. Nose behind this fragrance. Christopher Sheldrake, uh, of course, the nose for the in-house perfumier for the house of Serge Luton. Uh, the resume speaks about itself. Uh, I'm not even going to go into it. Let's get into the notes of Jeu de Peau. And as you can see here, we got apricot, milk, coconut, immortel. That is your X factor right there. Sandalwood, another X factor. Osmanthus and amber in the base. Now the major notes to this nose right here, you're looking at immortel. This is immortel heavy and I love this note. And you're going to see why. Sandalwood, of course, it's heavy in this dry down. And osmanthus, it's going to throw that apricot note right in your face. Group uh, gourmand dish. <laughs> I like to call this gourmand because it has a heavy bread uh, feel to the fragrance and you're going to see what I what I mean but uh, let's say oriental gourmand dish fragrance. How many sprays and where? So one on the chest my standard. This is going to be my scent of the day. I would assume here two on the neck. Boom boom. Good atomizer on these Uncle Sal's fragrances by the way. Two on the arm so I'm wearing a longer sleeve shirt. I'll put it right here um, and that's it. Five sprays and I'm in bakery, buttery, popcorn heaven. <laughs> now before I get into the meat and potatoes of this fragrance, a little history lesson here kids. Jeu de Peau was inspired by Uncle Serge's childhood memories of picking up bread at the local boulangerie for his family. Hmm. So if this is gonna smell like bread, I'm gonna be happy. Um, so let's get into it. I'm just going to, even though I'm swimming in it right now, I'm gonna put uh, one spray in the back of my hand here to remind me of this introduction. Now, the introduction of this fragrance, <sighs> warming, comforting. I mean, it really gives you that bakery feel. Um, it has a buttery aspect too. <sighs> a wheat-like feel, um, yeast. Oh, it's it's nice. It's it's different. It's daring in a different way. Um, it, it really is. It's not for everybody, but uh, from first sniff, it smells like a bakery to me. Uh, almost buttery, fresh bread. That's what it. That's what it feels like. It's, she's cozy, comforting, warming, and truly puts me in that comfort zone uh, when wearing it. The one thing that I noted in a lot of reviews is many people mention that it smells like buttery popcorn. So keep that in mind if you're thinking of blind buying this fragrance saying, oh, Mark's saying that smells like baked bread, sold. Um, some people get popcorn out of this and for good reason. There's a salty aspect in Jeu de Peau and there's also a buttery aspect to the fragrance. So I understand and of course bread, popcorn, eh, close cousins maybe. Uh, personally, I do get the buttery aspect and I do get a salty aspect that not a lot of reviews talk about. Um, it does have a salty aspect in Jeu de Peau but mostly uh, smells to me like a buttery toast. Um, it has a wheat-like accord that makes me think of something baked, um, not cake. This is not a, a sweet cake-like uh, muffin or anything like that. No, this is bread. This is straight up bread uh, with a pinch of salt in here. There's a saltiness and some butter and some milky quality too. Uh, the sandalwood really does a great trick here with the, the 
milky aspect, the smoothness of this fragrance. Um, what I would compare this to, and I was thinking about this, uh, is almost, I wanted to compare it to a fresh pretzel. If you've ever smelt a fresh pretzel, uh, or, or smelt it or went to a bakery and they had fresh pretzels. This is kind of what it smelt to me. Um, the saltiness, of course, of pretzels is, is huge. Um, in this fragrance, it's not as much. It's a, it's a secondary note, and a lot of people do miss it, uh, as per some reviews. So, and not as, of course, as buttery. Um, so tone down the salt and amp up the butter a little bit, and that's what you get. Um, kind of like a buttery pretzel with a little bit of salt. Not too much. Um, the Immortel in here. Oh my. Mm. I love Immortel. You guys know. I've reviewed, uh, you know, a couple fragrances last year in 2007. Sunshine Man, Immortel. Oh, she's nice. La Ligue, Fleur Universelle. Oh, Immortel, beautiful. So buying this, um, I bought this and I didn't even, you know, I wasn't even looking at the note breakdown and thinking that I was on a huge binge of Immortel. And then lo and behold, this thing has Immortel in it. And the Immortel in here, she dances and she dances so well. And is by far the most interesting floral in the game is Immortel um, because it, it doesn't smell floral. <laughs> it's a very complex note. And from what I hear, it's a hard note to utilize in a sense. So uh, kudos to Mr. Sheldrake for that. The Immortel note brings this fragrance its dough-like appeal. Um, and not only that, this fragrance has some sweetness and it is a maple syrup accord that Immortel gives off. Um, so Immortel does that. It, tr it truly shows like a yeast-like imagery to me. Um, there's also some shaved coconut in this fragrance. Yep. Um, the shaved coconut, not tropical at all. Uh, it's almost like a, it is a small part of Jeu de Peau, but it's there. And it reminds me of a dessert with some shaved coconut in it. I'm, I'm thinking kind of like macaroons or something like that, but not as sweet. Not as sweet. Just like some shaved coconut on your pretzel now. Maybe that's not as delicious anymore, but it does have like a shaved coconut feel or smell to the fragrance. And that's a secondary note. It's not huge in your face. It's just like that salty feel to this fragrance. Small, but as a whole impacts the scent. It also has a very, 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 is that enough varies? Very, very, very soft resinous amber. And when I talk resinous amber, I immediately think amber absolute. This is not, <laughs> it's not even close. It's very super soft, but still resinous. I don't know how you did it. Resinous amber that moves from the introduction right down to uh, the dry down of this. The complexity of this fragrance is actually quite outstanding. Um, another note that I uh, noticed in Jeu de Peau is in the introduction, it also has a licorice note. The licorice note is more into the background of the fragrance. Again, kind of like that coconut note. Um, it adds some depth and an interesting edge to the opening right up to the mid. Uh, the X factor in Jeu de Peau as a note would have to be the Immortel. By far, huge, huge presence in this fragrance and it makes it what it is. However, the sandalwood plays a huge part also. It's the second in command and it will um, anchor your dry down in this fragrance. Now talking about the dry down, let's get into that sandalwood based dry down. So sandalwood is king in this dry down and it is gonna be a huge part of this fragrance. Um, um, Sheldrake utilizes sandalwood in a lot of his uh, fragrances. There's a lot of sandalwood based Seljutan fragrances, especially recently. Um, now, Osmanthus. Osmanthus brings out an apricot note and it adds itself to the mid to the deep dry down. The dry down shows more smoothness thanks to, of course, that sandalwood. The Osmanthus brings that apricot idea to life in the scent which was utilized in other Sheldrake fragrances. So he has utilized Osmanthus before in Nuit de Cellophane. Um, so you're gonna have that, almost that apricot feel in this fragrance too, very nicely done. Um, goes with the whole idea and kind of gives it another dimension to the scent. Um, Jeu de Peau is not overly sweet. Um, so gourmandish, eh, eh, mm, it's not overly sweet or heavy as many gourmand scents are. I even have a hard time calling this gourmand. As you can tell, I'm kind of like hesitating calling this gourmand. It's foody, kind of. Um, this one has some thinness to it. Um, it, it really isn't very thick. Um, and that's fairly unique in this kind of gourmand genre. Um, there's a sneaky, mild, salty take in Jeu de Peau that I mentioned earlier with this buttery baked goods. And that's evenly balanced with some sweet apricot jam and some milky tones from the sandalwood. So altogether, Jeu de Peau 
It's a very unique and a great addition to the Serge Vuitton lineup, in my personal opinion. So let's get into the recommended age. Uh, who can wear this? Unisex. Boom. 20 and up. Boom. Fragrances. What does this remind me of? Um, I said in my first impression that it reminds me of this, the old school L'Artisan Parfumeur bottle here. This is a Jean-Claude Elena fragrance. Very foodie, smells like peanut butter. Yes, you heard me right. Bois Ferrin. Um, reminds me a little bit of this. They're not exactly the same. Um, some Serge Town fragrances. I don't have Santal Majuscule, but this is uh, definitely um, compared to it. Un Bois Vanille also. These uh, work well together. Um, so those are, again, Sheldrake utilizes some of his ideas that he've utilized back in, in the past to create new fragrances. So it doesn't surprise me that some Sergi 10 fragrances kind of pull from this one too. A uh, best time to wear this fragrance would have to be night and casual use. Seasons, uh, fall, this is 100%, 100% fall, but great for rainy days too. So that goes into fall, but also falls into spring, spring day, or mostly spring night. I like uh, spring rainy night. Parfait. Um, also winter, a little bit, just because of that comforting aspect to the fragrance. Uh, development, linear, average, or complex, very much high on the average, almost too complex. Um, it really has a lot of things going for it. Um, it has a big general idea, and this is a, a great thing about fragrances, and I know I'm going artsy on you guys, but um, just looking at everything that pulls together and gives you a general idea of a fragrance is an absolute genius in some fragrances. So a great job by Sheldrake on this one. Work appropriate? Eh, sorta, not really, depending on your work. Signature scent worthy? Could be, but for me, this is a piece that I wear from time to time. Now let's get into the rating system. Let's take a look at it. Projection, three bottles out of 10. Yeah, that's poor. Three bottles out of 10. Um, this is what I think this fragrance was meant to be, is a fragrance that didn't throw itself out like that. Um, that's why it's called Jeu de Peau. Very close to the skin, but I feel it was made to be that way. So even though it gets a low score, it's a three. Um, I, I'm not going to judge it just because of that. Longevity, much better score, seven bottles out of 10. It gives me that six to eight hours, pretty good. Um, I'd like a little bit more, but six to eight's pretty good. Compliment factor, very, very surprising score of eight bottles out of 10. Uh, even though it's gourmandish, um, usually those do very well on my skin. Um, I didn't think this one was going to garner anything, but it did. Interesting, it is so high at an eight. It did very well on my skin, and for the people around me, they enjoyed it, so eight. Uniqueness, I'm gonna give this one a 10. Perfect 10 for uniqueness. Um, even though it pulls a lot from a lot of other fragrances, Nothing does this the way this is doing it. Pricing versus what you get. I'm gonna give it nine bottles out of 10. I always liked Celsius uh pricing for their 50 mil bottles like this. Um, so what you're getting here, and I found it at Fragrance X, I think it was just a little under a hundred bucks. Forget about it, that's a good price. <laughs> Versatility gets an eight. Um, not too shabby. Um, not the most versatile fragrance in the world, but uh, you can wear it. Uh, it's not so thick that you can wear it in those middle seasons. So it makes it very much a great fragrance for nighttime for all seasons. And that goes to smell. Nine bottles out of 10. I really like it. That was very close to a 10 here for the smell. Um, I really think that uh, once you dissect this fragrance, there is so much going on in this one. It's uh, outstanding. And that goes to an overall score. Jeu de Pau gets the nine bottles out of 10 treatment out of me. Um, one of the better Serge Luton fragrances. A lot of them do get a high score from me just because they're so well done. Sheldrake's the man. Um, so nine bottles out of 10. That goes to buy, try, or pass. Jeu de Pau has to get the try treatment just because it's not for everybody. It just isn't. Um, so you have to try it. And uh, it's either you're gonna be very, very happy or you're just gonna be like, eh. Uh, so she's a try. So overall, Jeu de Peau is an excellent release from the house. It's rather unique, even though it pulls some ideas from other fragrances and Sheldrake's usual tricks from his past releases are in this fragrance too. I like it as a unique piece that I wear from time to time and it puts a huge smile on my face when I revisit it. It's one of those fragrances, it's just like, a new Harlem from Bond number no. nine. That stuff, if you have that as a signature scent, you're gonna get so tired of it. Um, foodie fragrances, uh, gourmand fragrances are mostly made for pieces that you wear from time to time. And when you wear them, you're like, whoa, 
I love wearing this fragrance. So this is one of those. Um, again, it's not something I would wear as a signature scent personally. It's just something special. A great addition to the brand, in my personal opinion, and something that if you value my opinion on fragrances, it's a must try. You have to sample this scent. You, you, you gotta. Um, so thank you for watching my review on Jeu de Peau from Uncle Serge. Please comment below if you have tried Jeu de Peau, good or bad. Um, if you agree, disagree with my rating and things like that, please comment below. I love hearing different takes on a particular fragrance. Maybe I missed something out of the fragrance. I love hearing your takes on this one. And as always, remember, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching.